A father was sharing an interesting tale with his son, one that recounted the story of the goddess of prosperity. According to the father, the goddess symbolized food and limitless gold, and was believed to have given birth to 10 million gods when the universe was created. However, she had a special love for her firstborn, Huster, who was greedy for all the gold and food. The other gods attacked him for his greed, but the goddess of prosperity saved him from turning into dust, on the condition that he would never be worshipped and would remain asleep in his mother's womb for eons. However, an ancestor eventually woke Huster up and built a shrine under his name, but since then, the village was cursed with non-stop rain. The father explained to his son that waking Huster up was necessary because he was a boon to them. The scene then shifted to the year 1918 in Tumbad village, western India, where an old person named Sarkar lay on his bed, with a woman providing him sexual services. Sarkar had promised the woman a gold coin on the upcoming new moon, but he claimed that earning it was never easy. Meanwhile, two kids, Vinayak and Sadashu, were anxiously waiting for their mother outside their home, despite the heavy rain. They were worried about having to feed their great-grandmother, who was in their house. The mother scolded the boys before giving more food to the old woman and then warning the kids to stay away from her. She carefully cut the old woman's toenails and shaved her head again. The kids then asked if the old woman had been given a gold coin, which resulted in a slap from their mother. She clarified that the gold coin was not a joke and warned them about the curse of Huster. Later on, the mother tried to console the old woman, who was whimpering and coughing, and told her to sleep or else Huster would come for her. The next day, Sirkar passed away, and the mother took her children and ran towards their house. She decided to leave the Tumbad village because nothing was left for them there. Vinayak suggested waking the chained-up grandmother to find the hidden treasure in the mansion, but his mother told him to try and wake her up himself. The children were talking outside, but tragedy struck when Sadashiv fell off a tree and began to bleed. Their mother rushed to find medical help and instructed Vinayak to feed their elderly grandmother, warning him that if she woke up, he should tell her to go back to sleep or risk Huster's wrath. Vinayak was left alone in the house with the task of preparing food for his grandmother. As his mother wept for Sadashiv's passing, Vinayak heard strange noises coming from his grandmother's room. He approached the room with trepidation and peeked under the curtain before finally opening the door to reveal his grandmother's grotesque appearance. Her skin was peeling off, and there were large nails protruding from her face. She babbled incoherently and seemed to avoid the light from Vinayak's lamp. He realized that she was searching for food and rushed back to the kitchen to prepare it for her. As he frantically tried to remember how to prepare the food, he heard the sound of chains rattling. Suddenly, his great-grandmother appeared, chaining his ankle and dragging him with her. Vinayak attempted to defend himself with fire, but she was too strong, and he found himself being dragged towards her gaping mouth. Only the mention of Huster's name made her step back in fear and fall asleep. Meanwhile, Vinayak's mother returned to find her son safe but greedy for more treasure. Despite her warnings, Vinayak refused to give up his search and continued to obsess over the riches that lay hidden in Tumbad. The rain poured down as they left the village by boat, with Vinayak still determined to uncover the treasure. Vinayak arrived in Tumbad, his old home, with a gasoline drum in hand. The house was now a decaying relic, overrun by spiderwebs and wild branches. It seemed as though the once proud structure had become one with nature. Vinayak searched for a chain that he knew was still on his great-grandmother. As he rummaged around the dusty interior, he stumbled upon a beating heart attached to the woods. He attempted to awaken his grandmother, but she spat blood in response. Vinayak couldn't help but laugh maniacally when she spoke. This was the moment where we, the observers, came to understand his true intention in returning to Tumbat. He pointed out the tree that had grown upon her, and asked why she had not been banished after her husband's death. She replied with a simple truth they needed her because she could descend the well faster than anyone else. His grandmother warned him never to venture down the well, lest he be cursed like her. But Vinayak was determined to find it, and promised his grandmother half of the treasure in exchange for its location. She only wanted her freedom and asked him to end her hunger by burning her. Vinayak was faced with a difficult decision, but he ultimately granted his grandmother's wish and set her ablaze. With his grandmother's hunger satiated, Vinayak returned to Pune city to find his wife. She had been searching for him and had started a wheat business to make ends meet. Vinayak met with Raghav, whom he owed a debt, and offered him a gold coin in exchange. 
Regov, an opium merchant, was curious about its origins, but Vinayak insisted it was ancestral. From that moment on, Vinayak would return to Tumbad whenever he needed money, stealing gold coins from the mansion. His desperation to escape poverty had given birth to his greed, and he would stop at nothing to claim what he believed was rightfully his. Vinayak's wife gave birth to their son, and they finally became wealthy. However, things took a dark turn when Raghav sold his daughter-in-law to Vinayak as a mistress. Meanwhile, Raghav visited the mansion in Tumbad, and Vinayak followed him. Vinayak knew that Raghav wanted to find the treasure for himself. He descended the well, aware that Raghav was watching, and encountered the mutated form of his former business partner. Vinayak battled against Huster, the god who guarded the treasure, using doe dolls to distract him. In the end, he succeeded in retrieving the gold coins, which had spilled from Huster's loincloth. Vinayak threw a lamp at Raghav to end his suffering and made his way out of the well, triumphant. Fourteen years have passed, and yet Vinayak still finds himself returning to Tumbad. His son, Pandarang, has grown into a young man, and it seems that he has inherited his father's skills in picking gold coins. Excitement brimming, Vinayak takes his son to Tumbad, warning him of the dangers that lie ahead. They spend time making doe dolls, preparing themselves for the task at hand. Once they enter the goddess's womb, Vinayak instructs Pandurang to create a circle made of flour, to prevent the god Huster from passing through. Despite his father's warning not to bring a doe doll, Pandurang secretly does so, and this decision almost proves fatal when Huster attacks them. Vinayak manages to protect his son, but he is angry that Pandurang disobeyed him. Back in Pune, Pandurang's mother questions him about what he saw in Tumbat, but he refuses to tell her. Meanwhile, Vinayak meets with some businessmen who suggest that he use his gold to elevate his status. He also learns that the government plans to build a new village in Tumbad and lock up the mansion. Vinayak shows Pandurang his safe, revealing all the gold he has accumulated. However, things take a dark turn when Vinayak beats his son for gifting a coin to his mistress. Pandurang suggests stealing Huster's loincloth instead, an idea that Vinayak accepts. Returning to Tumbad, they make more doe dolls, only to find themselves facing multiple clones of Huster. They fight off the clones using the dolls and flower circle, but Vinayak realizes that there is no escape. He decides to sacrifice himself, tying the remaining dolls to his body and using himself as bait to distract the clones so that his son can escape. Pandurang is torn between trying to stop his father and following his wishes. In the end, he throws his lamp at his father and sets him on fire, putting him out of his misery. He leaves without taking the loincloth, realizing that no amount of treasure is worth a person's life. It's a tragic tale, one that teaches us that the pursuit of wealth and power can have dire consequences. The Nayak's greed ultimately cost him his life, and his son had to make the painful decision to end his father's suffering. The story of Tumbad serves as a reminder that we should be careful what we wish for, as the price of our desires may be too high to bear. Did this film leave you on the edge of your seat? Or were you yawning through the whole thing? Leave your review in the comments below and let us know what you thought. And if you enjoyed our movie recap, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more thrilling recaps in the future.